Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Technic Ocean Explorer set. This is one of the Technic sets for this year that I personally have been really, really looking forward to for about a year now. This was released many months ago in many countries around the world and has just shown up on North American shores, so I'm finally able to show it. And LEGO did previously do, recently do, a kind of small version of this, like a baby version of it, in the Creator line. So they did their small Ocean Explorer, also the same name, with just a brick-based system used to build the whole thing up. But this is the real deal here. It is a pretty purely Technic build, it does have a handful of system pieces, but most of it is very genuine Technic stuff. It went together pretty simply, pretty easily. Took a little while to put together, but nothing about it was frustrating. Nothing about it seemed entirely too tricky. Nothing about it seemed too awkward. And this actually has three builds in the main model here because the little helicopter in the front is its own thing. I'll give you a look at that separately. And then at the back, they've got this uh, submarine little research sub which is a thing of its own as well but before I take that out of the picture I want to show you some of the functions of this ship there aren't too many you see one right here you see an activator for one you probably hear something clicking but you don't see anything happening look a little lower though it's a pair of rudders under there that turn from side to side, along with a pair of wheels and tires, because as it turns out, the entire ship is on wheels and it can rotate around and it can parallel park. <laughs> it's a, a novel little feature that they put into it. it, allows the thing to be steered around on the ground. It, it works okay. You know, we've got some wheels in the front. Uh, the front most single one doesn't receive too much weight. Most of the weight ends up on these two here. And then you just steer from the back. Don't worry about the fender there. Eh, interesting. I don't know if it's the most useful thing, but interesting. These fenders are just separate small assemblies. These are some of the system pieces that are used. And they just hang off the edges from these kind of cleats. The much more interesting feature though is the remote operation of the crane. So I'm just using two controls on the top of the superstructure, which allow you to turn this from side to side and bring the boom down and bring it up. So you can bring that all the way across the deck. It will also go across to the other side, but not quite as far because it's slightly, the whole thing is slightly offset. So definitely works best off the starboard side, but you do get that range of motion. This is cool. It, it feels it feels like there's a little bit of magic involved there just because my hand is so far away from the controls. They could have done the exact same thing with controls that were closer, maybe down here or something, but it wouldn't have felt as cool to me. You have to actually be here doing it with your fingers on the controls to, to get that feeling that, you know, you're not really part of the picture. <laughs> You're kind of separated from it. So the idea here is that you would be able to deploy or pick up the sub. However, um, so this is, this is the control for going up and down, and it does turn the boom from side to side a little bit when you do it, but you can kind of adjust for that. However, the place where the sub rests naturally, where it wants to be held in place and not slide forward or back, is not quite lined up with the end of the boom. So you do have to break that magic a little bit to get this hoop to line up properly. And then you can lift the thing up like so. It balances pretty well right there. And then take it off to the side. You're not able to really turn it. So even if you get it all the way off the edge there, still bring it down. You get, you get enough clearance, but it would be nice to be able to actually line it up with the ship, I think. But this works. And letting that down all the way. Let's see if I can. There we go. Bring this up. And now the little, little sub is deployed. The outer surface of the hull is pretty nicely shaped up with Technic panel pieces that are pretty consistent all the way around. They give very good coverage. 
very few gaps, nicely stepped up towards the bow. And in my opinion, the most interesting use of a part in this entire ship is this Air Jitsu, Ninjago Air Jitsu uh, spinner capsule that has been recolored into red. Oh, how nice it must be to be a Lego designer and to be able to just get a new color of an awkward, odd, strange, specialized part for your particular project. <laughs> it works out nicely though, it's a perfect shape. A little helicopter pad towards the front does make use of a couple of large stickers. That was mostly unavoidable, the sticker use there though, they possibly could have built it up, at least built up the H part with some more Technic pieces. And I do not like putting large stickers across these panel pieces because you have to try to get into the creases, otherwise you just trap a whole bunch of air under there. It just gets a little bit awkward, but the look is good. You see just a few system pieces used in here, not too many. I think they're appropriate. And the shaping of the bridge is pretty good, though it doesn't look like it's closed up from the back. Shaping of the smokestack is pretty perfect. Some of the instrumentation up there with the, the radar dish or disc and also an antenna on the other side. Back of the smokestack is a little bit opened, but that really doesn't bug me. You know, we've got just the, the brace there for the steering. A couple of lifeboat canisters that are approximated there. And then the deck actually has some decking involved with the Technic panel pieces, although there are gaps here. And those gaps do bug me because so much of this was done so well, covered so well, but you do end up with these gaps that are very, very visible going down the center line and along the edges. Here's a better look from the underside so you can see the different drivetrains for the various mechanisms. This is the steering one. You see that the, the steering for the wheels actually operates somewhat independently from the rudders, so that works out pretty cool. It's not all just on one single pivot. And then the ones for the, the crane actually are pretty nice. I like how they, they move the motion through the ship. Definitely my, my favorite thing here, just being able to operate the crane so remotely. The little sub is delightfully mostly a Technic build, though it does use some system parts. But I mean, this is a really, really small build, especially for something that has not one, but two functions built into it. First of all, this gear here can spin both propellers. I would have preferred counter-rotating props, but it still looks nice and that's very smooth and simple. And then this is a really good thing that they included there. The ability to kind of operate the arms. And those are far enough apart or far enough away from the, the control that I feel like I'm directly controlling it, but there is still a little bit of feeling of magic there. I think part of that is from just how it moves because you're, you're spinning this, this gear, this input gear so fast to turn the worm gear and then the actual motion you get from that is just, just at such a different rate and with a little bit of delay with the slight bit of, of play between the lobed gears and such that feels like there's some distance, some disconnect, which is actually a good thing. Uh, these can also be independently posed if you want. Of course, it would have been really cool to be able to do these independently and to have some up and down motion, but you can't ask for everything out of such a tiny build. Incidentally, this does, I uh, showed you the, uh, the minifig, this does have this very convenient little spot to put a minifig in there. If you want to do that, you can do it. It's completely legit and it's pretty obvious to me that they meant for that to be done. That's pretty cool. A little, little bit of crossover between a couple of worlds and I think it's cool. And then here's the helicopter, which also has a mechanism built into it. Pretty obvious what that's going to do. It's also a little bit more difficult to access its, its remote control, if you will, for those two functions because there's no access to it from the top. You have to come underneath and then you can spin this small little gear under here. This gets a nice amount of momentum behind it so it's able to continue going for a little while, especially if you spin it up at a nice good rate. That spins for a good little while as long as all of your gears are nice and loose. 
It's simple, but it works really well for its small size. And the proportions here, I think, are actually pretty respectable between the size of the, rot the main rotors and the little tail rotor assembly back there. And once again, you see a, a couple of a couple pins there with the little bits sticking up, just asking for you to attach something. I could do that here. Uh, let's see if I can, yeah, I can't quite get them to be all the way back. So he pretty much just has to sit here and then I can lean him back a little bit and then get this closed up just enough to just barely, barely, barely clear beneath the main rotor there. May rub a little bit depending upon what type of hair or headgear in general that you have on a figure, but this is something that is possible. So once again, nice little ability to integrate system stuff and system liveliness, the liveliness of minifigs, into a reasonable sized Technic build. This is a two-in-one build and here's what the secondary official build option looks like. It gives you a barge, a wind turbine, and also a push boat. The push boat has a couple of, of geared mechanisms. First of all, it has the bar, the lock bar that comes down in the front to lock into the barge itself. And they also have an extendable wheelhouse where you can turn the gear on the side and cause that to move up, which will give better uh, visibility for the operators. On the back, this also has the crane, which I think is for buoy uh, tending, but uh, that just has to be you know, manually posed. You also get the crane here on the barge, and in this case, it's able to slide back and forth. The whole thing is able to slide. I think the sliding may be manual, but you get a gear on either side for operating boom up and down and still being able to rotate the crane around as well. And then you also get the small wind offshore wind turbine, which is able to just spin up its prop like the main rotor from the helicopter. Instructions for that alternate build are only available online, so they don't give you a physical manual for that. But this main build is the thing that I was definitely most interested in. To me, it's by far the better of the two. It's interesting, it's different. It looks really cool, that's why I wanted it. It just, it just looks cool on display. It went together really nicely, it was fun to build. Not challenging, but just enjoyable. You make a lot of progress quickly because for the number of pieces, a lot of those pieces are fairly large and you, know, you start out doing the two small builds and then you start working on the hull from the back, uh, from the stern working towards the bow and it, it proceeds pretty quickly. So that just kind of adds to a, a sense of accomplishment that, that starts coming pretty quickly. Overall, I'm definitely satisfied with this thing. I don't think the wheel mechanism and the ability to roll it and steer it is super useful. I feel like that's something that most owners and builders of this will enjoy basically when they first put the wheels on and you know put the hull down get the front and back of halves of the hull put together and then kind of push it back and forth a couple times like hey yeah it rolls and that's about it. Uh, otherwise I think that mechanism could have been used towards possibly something else. I don't know what in particular, but uh, you know, I think having uh, a bow thruster on this or some propellers on the ship itself may have been a cooler inclusion than those. You know, it could have had a stand for the whole thing that would have left it up to allow you to actually see a bow thruster spinning up or the, the main prop spinning up. Really glad I got this thing though. I'm really glad I was finally able to buy it. It was a long, long, long wait while most of the world had access to it. So my apologies for not being able to do this review until now, but I do try to get things as quickly as I reasonably can. Completely staggered, uneven releases of items in different regions around the world is absolutely the norm. Perhaps getting worse as time goes by. So thank you for your patience. I feel like for myself, my own patience and wait was worth it with this kit. But now it's time for me to move on to my next video, so I'll be talking to you again very soon.